Whenever you ask someone, what's your favorite verse in the Bible? I can bet you they don't quote a verse out of Leviticus, but one of my favorite verses in the Bible is Leviticus 19, verse 1 and 2. This is what it says. The Lord said to Moses, give the following instructions to the entire community of Israel. You must be holy because I, the Lord your God, am holy. Welcome back, guys, to day 52 of our Reading the Bible Chronologically in the Year journey. I'm happy to have you. If you didn't know, right now I'm reading through the whole book of the Bible chronologically, and I'm inviting you to go on that journey with me. So let's hop into these few chapters of Scripture that we get in Leviticus. I love the first verses of chapter 19 because it encourages me to live as God wants me to live. He sets his perfect, awesome standard that we should spend our whole life aspiring to achieve. And he, he challenges us. He says, be holy because I am holy. I want you to be like me in that sense. We're supposed to be like God in the sense of holy, of holy and purity. God actually challenges his people in this book of Leviticus five other times to be holy. But this is the time where I think he just says it the most clearly. So how do we be holy? How are we supposed to live a holy life? Well, God in Leviticus actually gives us some standards of how to live a holy life. Leviticus 19.18 says, Do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against a fellow Israelite, but love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. The next verse is, they say different things. One of them says, Do not trim your hair on your temples or trim your beards. Wink, wink. <laughs> when people tell me I don't have long hair, I quote Leviticus to them. And then another verse that is more controversial, in our culture at least, is do not cut your bodies for the dead. Do not mark your skin with tattoos. I am the Lord. This is a really touchy subject. If I were to go to my grandmother and ask, hey Mimi, should I get a tattoo? She would go, well Pops, come here. Tell me that one verse in, in Leviticus that says we're not supposed to get tattoos. And I personally don't have any tattoos because of personal convictions that I have about them. And I'll share those with you really quick. Every time we read the Bible, we should look at who this was written to. Well, this was a book written to the Israelites that lived thousands of years ago. So how did people get tattoos back then? They got tattoos that identified who they were. If they were a warrior, they might get a tattoo of their commander. If they were from a tribe, they might get a tribal tattoo. Or in some cases, they got tattoos to honor the dead, which was like a form of worship to them. It was a way of how they worshiped. Now, God set his people apart. He wanted them to be holy as they are holy. So when he formed creation, he made people set apart or holy in his own image. We look distinctly and act distinctly different than anything else in creation. We have consciousness, intelligence, like nothing else that has ever been created. So God didn't want something that was supposed to resemble him to have things be put on it. Now, with that being said, we are not held to Levitical law. This is what Paul says. Romans 6, 14 says this, For sin shall no longer be your master, but you are not under the law, but under grace. So we as Christians are not held under the law. We have been set free through grace, so we don't have to obey the law. This is why we're able to eat things like pork, according to to New Testament teaching. Romans 7, 7 tells this, well then, and I, well then, am I suggesting that God's law is sinful? Of course not. In fact, it is the law that showed me my sin. I would never have known it, that covenanting is wrong if the law had not said, you must not covet. So the law teaches us principles of how to follow God. However, we're not held to the requirements that it sets forth. It's kind of a gray area that I'm still studying for myself and hoping to understand more. Tattoos for me are a personal conviction thing. That's why I don't have them. I've also, if you've thought about becoming a missionary as I'm praying through right now, then if you go to certain parts of the world, here in America, most people don't really care about tattoos that are especially younger. There's an older generation that looks poorly on them. So if you're planning on witnessing to them, Paul says, I'll become all things for all people so that some might be saved. So that certain areas in the world, they don't look good on tattoos. So why would I tattoo my body to make them stumble? Or if I was going to go witness to older people that have a bad view of tattoos, why would I get tattoos to make them stumble? 
but that again is a conviction for myself and I won't hold that to another person. So Leviticus has a lot of one-liners. It's And a lot of the time it says, do not do this or do not do this or you need to do this. And it's kind of one sentence at a time. So when going through this, I always look for things that, that stick out to me and, and what I'm thinking. And something that's been on my heart a lot recently is, is the topic of abortion. And I really think it's a defining characteristic of a nation, of whether or not they allow abortions and to the extent that they go. Personally, as a Christian, I don't see any biblical proof that it is a woman's right to choose. That is a living being that God put. It's God's right to choose what gives life and who gives life and who takes it. It's not ours. David says that God knit him together in his, mother, his mother's womb and he numbered the days of his life. And all the days ordained before him were written in God's book before one of them came to be. But this is what God says in Leviticus 20. If any of them offer their children as a sacrifice to Moloch, they must be put to death. The people of the community must stone them to death. So not only can, must they be put to death if they sacrifice their kid, but the people are supposed to gather and come together and stone them. And this is a touchy subject, but I think it's so clear in Scripture that we are supposed to speak out on it. God went into a nation of people that were sacrificing their kids. They were literally sacrificing their kids to Moloch, to God. And then later on, there's other child sacrifice that happens to the Bible, and even the Israelites begin to do it one day. And what does God do to nations that sacrifice their own kids? He destroys them. He destroys those nations. And here in the U.S., child sacrifice runs rampant. And it's called abortion. And it's really happening. And when I see God turn on nations, it's when they destroy their kids, when they sacrifice their kids. Not even in these people's mind, it was twisted. This is how I'm worshiping my God. But we sacrifice our kids to the God of abortion, to the God of fear, to the God of anxiety, to the God of I can't do this. It's all about something on them the majority of the time. And it's clear in scripture that we are not the ones that are supposed to choose life or take it. Another final thing that I'll add before we end, again, it says in Leviticus 21, it says, I, the Lord, am holy, and I make you holy. We're supposed to be like God in the sense of pursuing holiness as he is holy. And one day when we go to heaven, we'll be perfect and set apart and holy just like he is. But he talks about his high priest. This is what he says in 2113. The high priest may marry only a virgin. He must not marry a widow, a woman who is divorced, or a woman who has defiled herself by prostitution. She must be a virgin from his own clan. So my question, if you're Catholic, that I would love to have a discussion about, is why do the Catholics not marry? Paul talks about it in 1 Corinthians 13, that if you can't control yourself, then to marry. And my question is, why would you put a burden on someone that if they feel like they want to serve the Lord in priesthood, that they wouldn't be allowed to marry, even though God's priests in Leviticus were allowed to marry. So I know we've covered a lot today, from tattoos to abortion to Catholics priests. That's what Leviticus is like. I think it's an incredible book that's so packed full of things that we can truly apply to our lives. Join me tomorrow where we continue our study through Leviticus and the whole Bible and the Reading Your Bible in a Year plan.